Hey guys, I'm Nadine, the founder of Throttle, and today I'm here with Crick, who is the 2018 Pro 2 driver in Formula Drift. Behind me is this amazing S13. You want to tell us a little bit about it? This is a concept that I came up with over the last 10 years. I've kind of been dreaming about this car. Uh, I, I've been building Nissan S chassis for a long time for drift cars. A lot of them, unfortunately, have came out of circulation. Some from me and others that I've built. <laughs> When I wanted to build this car, I kind of wanted to get into putting them back into circulation. The goal with these cars is to offer them at a price point that competes with you buying a Nissan 240 and having it built into a drift car. My goal is to pretty much meet that price point and sell a rolling chassis that you could simply just put your swap kit into. My goal is to not remove the culture out of these cars. There's a lot of companies that make really good parts for the S13. I want to make sure that all of those companies' parts still work on these chassis. So I modified areas that could be, and I kept areas that couldn't be modified not. Meaning subframes can go vertically up and down in the car for roll center changes. However, they're in their proper location. So wheelbase stays the same, uh, sub stock subframes bolt in. Simple things that have motivated me to do this over the years are watching the Nissans constantly climb in price. Like an S14 rear subframe right now is a thousand bucks. My plan is to sell rear tubular subframes at that same price point with interchangeable center sections so you could run different diff configurations. Right, so it would be cheaper even for a pro to have maybe a drift taxi or maybe a practice car or even someone going into pro spec who just wants to get in. It 100% will be easier and another thing about it is if you could just simply go on the internet and order a car and in six weeks a chassis shows up to your shop for you to put together, I think that'll expedite build times tremendously. Absolutely, you're not sitting there slaving away during the off season, right? So let's talk about the carbon fiber of this. It's all carbon fiber. Everything is carbon fiber. Is this what you would sell to somebody? No, I think that a, a more economical choice will be fiberglass. Maybe we could do a carbon with a super flexible resin if they wanted that look so parts wouldn't break as easily. Well, let's go around on the inside because I noticed that there is no floor. So why did you do that? So if we were to do the interior sheet metal for the show, then you would walk up to it and you would think that this is still a 240. That's right. Being that the floor is removed, it allows you to look throughout the chassis and see all of the fabrication work that's been done, all of the modifications. There's a lot of partners involved with this build. Right. This, this allows everyone to see my partner's products on this build i really feel like there's a group of all-star partners yeah. there is nothing subpar on this car i only reach out to companies that i value in this industry yeah. um, and, and we specifically asked for certain things from them this whole process has been a blessing i've noticed that the wheel is very close to the driver is that just your preference of style so when you're driving the car you want the steering wheel to be where your arms are most comfortable you don't want your wheel super close to you. Yeah. You don't want your wheel super far from you. You want it to where your hands have to do the least amount of work. Right. So this car is tailored for me and this is tailored exactly how I want it to be. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about power to weight ratio. So this engine makes 650 horsepower. Okay. Currently the car is 1600 pounds. This thing will still be well below 2000 pounds with me in it. Okay. which is good because then we can add a bunch of weight and ballast the car how we want. Okay. The car is so light everywhere that we can put weight anywhere we want and the car will still be underweight. This has 650 horsepower on pump gas, uh, 600 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Um, very reliable power plant. What type of engine are you thinking about? Are you thinking like 2JZ or? So with these chassis, there are so many good companies that make swap kits. Okay. Since all of the factory mounting locations are still on the chassis, right. you can run any swap kit that anyone makes. Like, okay. so any kind of swap that you've ever seen in a 240 will go into this with parts off the shelf. I didn't want to trap anyone to have to buy additional things from me. Right. Like you could simply just buy a chassis and a body and you can go and build it in your garage. You could buy a chassis and over time buy a body. The molds are done in a way to where the body does not have to be one piece. This was just simply for the show. I felt a one piece body would be more stunning here, but ideally all of the panels would be removable and independent of each other. So that when you break a quarter panel hitting a wall, you just change a quarter panel. And in terms of the rear here, uh, you're going to be putting a rear bumper on here. 
So when you sell it, the rear bumper will have a jacking point. Okay. Also, you can have a rear bumper as an option, or you can run it with no rear bumper. I would prefer to run it with no bumper when I compete only because then you could get the car that much closer to the wall. If I was running a series like Formula Drift, which this car is not legal for, but if they did a spec series, then we could use these cars, then I would run a bumper because I don't like the look of a non-complete car on track, yeah. unless it's fun driving. If it's fun driving, why tear up the bumper? You know, go get close to the wall, just having fun, and it doesn't have to look that good. I think that a car in competition missing a bumper is not the jam. The cars are getting more expensive, and this is really a good way to get somebody into the series in a, in a competitively priced way. I wanted to show the world that drift cars could be at the top tier of motorsports build-wise, because I'm a fabricator. I do a lot of drag race cars. I do a lot of road race cars, and I hear a lot of road racers, drag racers say, oh, it's a drift car. And, and what they're saying is that our sport is subpar. That's, that's what their voice means. And I wanted to show them that drift cars can be top tier builds. Well, on that note, if you're interested in getting more information about the car, then make sure you go to your website and also catch them on Throttle and you've also got some of your other socials Yeah, available. check it out on Throttle, Orion Race Cars, Crick Filippi. Check it out, buy a car. Thanks so much, guys. And for more content like this, make sure you give us a follow. That's for all's feeling connections and driving experiences. Thank you.